name is Ilya Benish, and I work as a carpenter for the Cold Climate Housing Research Center here in Fairbanks, Alaska, and we are part of uh, NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And what you see here is a, obviously a shipping container, and it's ultimately destined to become part of a small home project. But before we got started on the container, we actually had to get the container into our lab, and that brought up some interesting challenges. And what we had to do is we had to find a way to mount wheels on this container. And we did not have the luxury to use uh, factory wheels, so we had to fabricate something. And the challenge for us was, how do we mount wheels onto a container without altering the container or altering the casters? And so this little video clip is just uh, something I figured would be worth sharing because there are so many people out there um, interested in building container homes and we saw very little information available as to how one might go about attaching non-factory uh, types of heavy casters to a container like this. This is at your own risk. This is not sanctioned by the shipping container companies. This was not reviewed by an engineer. This is a site build. Um, we are taking responsibility for our little project here. We can't do it for yours. We just thought we'd share it in case it's useful to someone. Our caster and connection assembly can be broken down into just a handful of basic parts. We've got a very heavy um, commercial rated caster. We've got a mounting plate with threaded holes that are book matched to accept the caster so they bolt together. The mounting blade has a corner key block that references on the bottom um, slot in the connex corner. And then we have a clamping plate that fits inside the corner and connects to the mounting blade with a heavy duty grade eight connecting bolt. Our criteria for selecting a caster were that it not only had to be able to handle um, a very large amount of weight, but it also had to move relatively easily, hence the double wheels on this caster. And it also had to have a generous enough um, base plate on it that it could easily bolt to the connex corner. Also, given the amount of mass that a 7,000 pound connex has, uh, we wanted all of our fabricated components to be at least as robust as our caster. Consequently, our mounting plate is three quarters of an inch thick. Our corner key block is one inch thick. Um, that fits very well inside that connex corner. And our clamping plate is also three quarters of an inch thick. And it fits very snugly inside uh, the connex corner, so there's not a lot of wiggle room. When this assembly was all assembled and clamped together, um, it was very, very strong. Here's an exploded view of how our caster mounting assembly components went together. We started by welding the corner key to the mounting plate dead center. This is followed then by taking that mounting plate and holding it up to the underside of the connex corner and inserting the clamping plate into the top corner of the connex and bolting this assembly together. Now everything is bolted and secure except for the caster. So once our clamping plate is cinched down and snugged, then as a last step we can bolt our caster into the corner. Now let's take a look at uh, how we've actually assembled our caster on site. So here's a close up of one of our corners that we're just getting ready to bolt the caster in. And I thought I would point out a little closer, a couple extra details here. We chose as our clamping bolt a 7 8 grade 8 bolt. This one's about 2 and 3 quarters to 3 inches long. Um, we didn't use a 1 inch bolt 
because it would have been too difficult uh, to cut an oversized hole with our magnetic drill. But more importantly, a one inch bolt would be very hard to reach when you need to hold it down like this and you're running your impact wrench. The bolt head is simply too big and so your wrench is too big and it gets really awkward in there. So we felt pretty comfortable using a 7 8 bolt. Um, the other thing here you can see is that our plate is 3 quarters thick. It's the same thickness as the base plate on our caster, but the reason we chose the 3 quarter is also that we can fully recess our bolt head in the bottom. See there's plenty of extra room. So now it can rest right on top of our caster plate and we don't have a bolt head that's sticking down. The other thing we did is we made a template of our corners. These are about seven and a half inches on center. And we transferred that layout to our four plates for our four corner casters. But the idea then is once our plate is up tight, we've got our three quarter inch holes and they clamp in and they clamp everything together. And I'll illustrate here. Given that this caster weighs 85 pounds, it's uh, not light. You don't want to try to lift it. Um, instead, we just tack welded a three quarter inch nut onto some three quarter inch threaded rod. And it turns out, if with our plates being nine and a quarter inches square, our threaded rods clear on every location at two diagonal corners. So we simply tip our wheel up, get everything started, and then we can run it up with an impact. So, as you can see, there's no lifting involved, and then you can go back in later and run all your bolts in by hand, get everything slightly aligned and snug down. I shouldn't have to say it, but obviously you want all of these connections to be torqued quite tight because there is a lot of weight and moment force on this as it's rocking and racking around, so everything needs to be snugged up.